The three variables you need to calculate a mortgage repayment are the term, as in how long your loan's for, the amount you borrow, and the rate that you're going to be paying back at. Now this is a fixed rate. Now variable rates is another level of complexity. It requires a different approach. So let's just knock up a quick structure for this table, starting with the term at the top. And I'm going to set that to an initial value of 30 years. Now obviously you can also choose 25 or 20 years if you want to. Now down the side here, let's put some amounts that you may want to borrow. To create a list of these quickly, if you just type in the first couple of figures, so let's say 350,000 and 400,000, you can select both of those and then just auto fill down to build the list in 50,000 increments. Let's do the same for the percent across the top here. Let's start at 3.75% and then move on to 4% for the second one. Select them both, auto fill them across for as far as you want to go. And then just to format them consistently, I'm going to click the percent at the top here in the number group and add a couple of decimal places. Now as for the figures down the side, these are dollar amounts, but just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to leave these as numbers for now. But let me just quickly select them and bold all of these headings. Now the first formula gets placed here. Now to calculate the mortgage repayment figure, we need to use what's called a PMT function, a payment function. And it goes like this. So let me click the FX here. Now first of all, we need to pick up the rate. The rate is the 3.75%. This is an annual rate. Now let's imagine that for this table, we're actually after the monthly repayment figure. So I'm simply going to divide that by 12 to get the monthly interest rate. The N per is the number of payments that you'll be making over the life of your loan. So that's the 30 years in cell B1 multiplied by 12. Now the PV is the present value. How much are we borrowing? So for this first one, I'm going to click A4, but rather than just clicking the cell, I'm going to make it a minus figure. So minus A4. And the reason for that is that if you don't, the final result end up negative. So just by making the PV negative, your result comes back positive. And that'll just make the final table a lot easier to read. Now the other two arguments here, the future value and the type, I'm just leaving empty for simplicity. So let's click OK, and we'll see the first result here is $1,620.90. Now again, just for simplicity, I'm gonna work with whole dollars. So let's reduce the decimal places down to whole dollars here. Now that's fine for the first cell, but if I left it like this and just copy down a couple and copy it across a couple, you'll see that very quickly we're getting some pretty strange results, hash nums in all of these. And it's because everything is working on a relative basis right now. So where the first cell here is referring to basically the cell above to get its interest rate and the cell to the left to get the present value, so are all these others. But obviously as you move down to this cell here, it's picking up the cell above, which is a dollar amount. And as you copy this formula across to this cell, instead of picking up the 350,000, it's picking up the dollar amount here. So obviously all of these formulas are basically rubbish. They're picking up the wrong cells at this point. So we need to fix things or partially fix things using the absolute cell references. So let's just edit this formula here. Now looking at each of these cell references, B3 is referring to the rate. All of those rates are on row three. So that's the constant here. So with my cursor on that reference to B3, I'm gonna press F4 twice. So it now says B$3. In other words, the column isn't fixed. So as I copy it across, it's gonna go B to C to D to E and so on. But as I go down the column, everything in this column points to row three, which is what we need to pick up that rate every time. The second cell reference is pointing to B1. That's the term at the top. Now that's not gonna change. It doesn't matter where you are in the table, it's always gonna be B1. So one press of F4 will give me $B$1. And the final figure here, A4, that's referring to the 350,000 on the left, the amount. All those amounts are in column A. So that's the common reference point there. So I'm gonna press F4 three times to make it $A4. In other words, the column, column A, is fixed, but the row number isn't. And therefore, as you copy this down, it's gonna pick up each different amount. And that's what we need here. So when you press enter, you still get the same figure in the first cell, but if you now copy this down, you'll start to see some proper figures here. Now what I wanna show you is a little trick to populate this whole table quickly, and it's this. If you select the whole range like this, the only active cell right now is that top one. And if I press F2, you can see the formula for that top cell there. And at this point, I'm gonna press Control Enter. And we've now got figures all the way across the table. Now, albeit some of them are showing two decimal places. So let's just fix this up properly to show whole dollars only. Now, because we fixed up the appropriate bits in that original formula, it doesn't matter how big your table is, it's always gonna be picking up the right figure from the column and the right figure for the row and calculate the correct mortgage repayment figure. And just to go through that last technique again of populating the entire table, once you've got your first formula written, if you select the whole range you want to apply the formula to, then press F2 and then Control Enter. 
it will then edit the formula and then apply that same formula to every selected cell.